On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. We welcome you here this morning to this Sunday school lesson, amen, where we will be discussing the wisdom of Jesus, amen, on the 19th of July, 2020, amen. We're going to come out of Mark, the sixth chapter, the first through the sixth verse, amen. We're continuing to talk about wisdom, amen. We've been talking about wisdom over the last three, or actually probably about two months now. We've been talking about wisdom. Last week, we talked about Jesus in his youth. The, the title of the lesson was The Boy Jesus. We were talking about Jesus in his youth. Today, we're talking about the wisdom of Jesus. And by the end of this lesson, we will identify the reason or reasons the people of Nazareth could not accept the wisdom of Jesus. Repent of the occasions when Jesus' words made us feel offended instead of accepting them as wisdom and commit to accepting the words of Jesus even when they challenge us right where we are. Many of us have been there before. We've received words of wisdom a, through someone, amen, through the word of God. The question is, how did we receive it? Today, our lesson scripture is coming out of Mark, the sixth chapter, the first through the sixth verse. I'm going to read and ask the class to help me out here this morning. I'm going to start out with Mark, the first verse. And in the first verse of Mark, it says, And he went out from thence and came into his country, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath day was come, he began, he began to teach in, in the synagogue, synagogue. and many and hearing him was astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are walked by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they are offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own home, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And, and he, he went, went round, round about, about the, the village, village teaching. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word this morning. That's Mark, the sixth chapter, the first through the sixth verse. This week, we're still exploring wisdom, where we're discussing this morning the source of wisdom. Amen. We've studied wisdom and we understood and we understand and have agreed that wisdom is the quality or state of being wise, the ability to discern the things of God. There's a lot of people that's knowledgeable. There's a lot of people that have experienced things. I have experienced a lot of things in my life, but I cannot experience everything. Um, I um, have schooling. I cannot know everything. But I'm talking about the ability to discern the things of God. To know Jesus is to know wisdom. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter and the third verse says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. It says, Who God, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Amen. See, we understand to know Jesus is to know wisdom. If you want to experience wisdom, we read Psalms 111 and 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So we understand that wisdom comes from God. 
And God has given Christ to us to be wisdom. And when we're obedient to the commandments of our Lord and Savior, we find out that it demonstrates that we have understanding. God's wisdom is unlike man's wisdom. God's wisdom transcends the wisdom of man. It's rooted and grounded in the knowledge of God. That's beyond your experience. That's beyond your intellect and your education. I'm talking about the wisdom of God. Discerning, we say, the things of God. Our lesson background this morning, we're coming out of Mark. John Mark, we, we know that Mark was his Roman name and John was his Jewish name. But our subject here in Mark this morning is Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus the carpenter as we discussed last week. The high priest, the Messiah, the prophet, the seer, the rabbi, and the teacher. We're talking about Jesus this morning. The wisdom of Jesus. The source of our wisdom. It's how we experience wisdom and show understanding in our actions by being obedient. Mark begins to highlight the forerunner of Jesus. We see here John crying out in the wilderness. Back in Mark, the first chapter in the third verse, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. You'll find in Mark, the first chapter and the 14th verse. John was clothed in camel's hair, eating locusts, and wild honey, he baptizes Jesus in the river Jordan. And we see doves ascending upon him in Mark, the first chapter, in the ninth verse. We see the Holy Spirit immediately mm -hmm, leads Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted of Satan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, while with the wild beasts and the angels ministered to Jesus. We see later on in the 16th verse of the first chapter where Jesus is a fisherman of men. Mm -hmm. In the 21st verse, Jesus cast out demons and the scribes, the Bible tells me, were amazed. You can see that in the 27th verse. They says, what new doctrine is this? Even the unclean spirit obey him. That's amazing. They say, what new doctrine? We can just stop right there that was amazing they the scribes we see here the ones the keepers of the law said what new doctrine is this hey this is very important we see the background and understanding when we look at our lesson the wisdom of jesus why it might have been hard for them to accept the wisdom mm -hmm, that came from jesus they said what new doctrine is this in the 40, 41st verse of the first chapter jesus cleansed a leper I love it. He says, I will. He said, I am willing. Be thou clean. Uh-huh. Jesus evangelizing. I say, it's a revival time here. I see in chapter 2, when Jesus showed up to Capernaum, we see there wasn't standing room, and he preached the word of God. That's in Mark, the second chapter, and the second verse. Jesus perceives the hearts of the scribes in Mark 2 and 8. Mm-hmm. Does not the Son of Man have power on earth? And he healed the sick of palsy. We can find that in Mark 2 and 10. In the 15th verse, Jesus, cat, Jesus eats with the publicans and sinners. That's wonderful, ain't it? Jesus took time to eat with the publicans and the sinners. Amen. We know some, you know, they get in positions or they think that they're in a position of authority and they find out they're too good to eat with everybody else, amen. But we see Jesus, amen, he ate with the publicans and sinners. I'm highlighting something here as we go into this lesson. I'm characterizing something here as we go into this lesson because we see that they had their own idea. They had their own expectation of the king to come. But see, this king, I'm talking about King Jesus, amen. Oh, man, he didn't just go along with the norm, amen. And when King Jesus came about, see, he just wasn't saying what they were saying. They said, what new doctrine is this? Uh-huh. And then he humbled himself where that he would even eat with the publicans and the sinners. 
as we are discussing the second chapter in the 15th verse. We see here in the 22nd verse of the second chapter, we know that new wine must be put in new bottles. Uh huh. We see Jesus teaching on fasting, amen. Uh huh. We see here that, see, that flesh has to die. See, we're talking about new wine uh, can't go into an old bottle. We see the spirit of God can't reside in you the way that you are. You got to change, amen. You can't stay the way that you are. We see the affliction of the flesh. I'm talking about in the rising of the spirit, we find that you have to be renewed. And Mark, the 27th chapter, uh, tw uh, second chapter in the 27th verse, we see the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Uh-huh, in the 14th verse of the third chapter, Jesus chooses and ordains 12 disciples to preach, to proclaim the word of God. In the 25th verse of the third chapter, we see that if a house is divided against itself, this is the reason why we have to stay unified in all that we are. A house divided against itself, the Bible tells me that house cannot stand. Amen. We have to come on one accord. Amen. Above all, Jesus tells us to love one another. Amen. Where is the love? Glory to God. In chapter 4, we see the parable. I'm talking about a brief comparison by using a story of the sower. Uh -huh. Jesus taught many things by parables in his doctrine, this new doctrine that they were talking about. Because we see sometimes when man gets things, they kind of go astray. There's, it's very important that as teachers, as preachers, as disciples of God, that we don't add or take away from the word of God. In the fifth chapter, we see a woman with an issue of blood who touched his garment. Amen. Glory to God. She seen fit. She believed that if I could just reach out, and touch his garment. We should reach out. Amen. Reach out for Jesus today. Mm -hmm. Starting with the first chapter through the fifth chapter, Jesus is introduced and begins immediately to operate under the direction of the Spirit of God. See, we didn't want to slow down right there. We see that he operated under the direction of the Spirit of God. We need to stay in the spirit, under the, the direction of the spirit of God. Say, so, uh, if God's will. Jesus begins to teach the oracles of God. He demonstrates miracles. And uh -huh, we see the source of wisdom uh -huh, for those who would receive. Uh -huh, and we find out that the, uh, the scribes, they had the idea, they had the vision of what I call a natural man. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 2 and 14. I'm going to read this wonderful verse here. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. See, it was hard for them to understand because they were not looking at it from the eyes of God. They wasn't looking at it from a spiritual standpoint. They were looking at it, what we call it, from a temporal standpoint. Uh-huh. For they are foolish unto him. Have you ever talked to someone about the things of God and in their minds? Someone might be listening right now. This is foolishness to them. But we see, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolish unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually, we're talking about wisdom. They are spiritually discerned. Mm-hmm. Our lesson text this morning is about the wisdom of Jesus. Amen. We want to go into the sixth chapter and the first verse. This is a wonderful lesson this morning. Amen. As we see the wisdom of Jesus. Last week we talked about Jesus in his youth. We understood that his mother and father was looking for him for some time. And when they found him, he was sitting amongst the elders there it says that he was sitting amongst the lawyers and when he began to speak at 12 years old in the temple that they were amazed mm -hmm. 
But we see here now, we see in the first verse, it says, and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples, I love it, says, follow him. Mm -hmm. Who are we following? Glory to God. Mm -hmm. We see led by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is returning from, I'm talking about thence, Capernaum, where he taught in the synagogues and was glorified by all. Now, to, he's back in his own town. Have any of y'all ever went back to your hometown? Y'all know what I'm talking about. See, they stuck on yesterday. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Can you see Jesus? I'm talking about, you remember this 12-year-old boy teaching, uh-huh, in the synagogue? This 12-year-old boy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, speaking wisdom to the doctors, the lawyers, the scribes. Now he's back in his hometown, Nazareth. See, we find out that's a town in Galilee where Jesus had been brought up. Uh -huh. This is where he was raised. I'm talking about where you were raised up. Go back and read in Luke, the second chapter around the 39th verse, and you'll see where he was raised. But see, the significance of Nazareth we see here, read John, the first chapter, and the 46th verse. It says, And Nathanael said unto him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? See, Nazareth couldn't have had a good name. Uh huh. They say, Nathaniel said unto him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Amen. Some people thought nothing good can come out, could come out of you. Amen. Uh -huh. Tell them to come and see. Amen. Amen. You up under new leadership. A lot of us have come from a small town that some thought nothing good would come from it. Look at Jesus then, uh-huh, and look at Jesus in you right now. John, the first chapter, in the 45th verse, we see Philip finded Nathan and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Why? was Jesus just returning to his hometown? Mm -hmm. Can somebody say, oh, it's, uh, it's now time? See, it was very significant to point out that Jesus was led by the Spirit. He wasn't doing it in his, in his own time. As we talked last week, we were in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, I believe it was around the first verse. We find out that there's a time and season for everything, amen. We need to stay in the timing of God's will and desire for our lives to bring him glory. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Uh-huh. It's time. For some of us, it's time right now. Amen. It's time now, amen, for us to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's time right now for those that have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to do the work, amen, that God has appointed for them to do. Glory to God. In Mark, the first chapter, the 15th verse, it says, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Somebody can say it was time. Amen. We see here the disciples. We can read in this verse. Follow him. Mark 1 and 14. Now after that, John was put in prison. John came into Galilee preaching the gospel. What is that? Of the kingdom of God. In the 16th verse, it says, Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Mm -hmm. Can we see Jesus? He was a fisherman of men. Amen. Uh-huh. Glory to God. And Mark, the third chapter in the 14th verse, we see, and he ordained 12 mm -hmm, that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach, to proclaim the word of God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. We see here in this first verse that Jesus is now back into in his, 
what we call environment where he grew up. See, his environment represents the past. It's where he came from, amen. Some of us can't get past where we came from, amen. Sometimes people in your past, they, want you, they won't allow you uh, in their own minds for, for you to live beyond your past, amen. Have you ever been around folks that that's all they talk about, what you do, used to do yesterday, amen? Um, they'll never mention how you have grown or how you are bringing God glory today. Um, they'll keep you in prison in your past and talk about how bad of a child you were, uh huh. You know, what I'm saying 50 years ago, or how bad of a man or woman you were in your youth, amen. But let me tell you, I am a testimony, glory to God, that you can, uh, we call bring God glory beyond your past, amen, if you receive him as your Lord and Savior. And in the things that you do, exercise wisdom, amen, in your actions, amen, because it demonstrates that you understand the word of God, that you're just not showing up to church 52 weeks out in a year and never learning, amen. It demonstrates that you understand something, amen. You can get beyond your past, glory to God. Amen. Even if people, amen, in their minds, amen, won't allow you. You know what I'm talking about. You know, have you been around folks and um, you used to do things that did not bring God glory? And you come around and the only thing they talk about, it, you remember when you used to act up? You used to be real mannish. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He was, he was so mannish. Why, why are we talking about that? Amen. Amen. And look, he used, and look he, used to, he used to party until the club closed. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He used to drink till you couldn't drink no more. Amen. Glory to God. But can I tell you something? Just like I am up under new management, glory to God. Because, see, we find out that the devil is no longer my daddy. Glory to God. See, my father, I'm talking about my father in heaven. Amen. My spiritual father, I'm talking about Jesus Glory to God. I find out that I'm up under new management. Glory to God. I encourage you to believe and have faith in all the things that you do and know that you are under new management. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I want to talk about the second verse here. In the second verse it says, and when the Sabbath day was come, it says he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? See, some people, they can't really understand. They can't, because see, they're doodling around with facts in their own minds and their limited experience, their limited in intellect, their limited wisdom. But we find out that when you're in the spirit, things are unlimited. What is it that you cannot accomplish? You can accomplish all things, amen. It says that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. They're amazed that these things are happening before their eyes, amen. Glory to God. See, the Sabbath day, we see the custom for the Jews were to worship on the Sabbath day in the synagogue. In Exodus, the 20th chapter, the 16th through the 17th verse, it says, wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath through the generations for a perpetual covenant. In the 17th verse, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Amen. Many times we talk about the Sabbath. Amen. And men begin to just doodle around in their minds and argue back and forth about what day is a Sabbath and was it on the Jewish calendar and what day is this and that. But I say to you, Mark, the second chapter in the 27th through the 28th verse says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Amen. Where it is, it's absolutely 
dealing with something uh, that's literal, I encourage you to look beyond the literal and understand that not only do we need to have a physical rest, at some point, because we serve a God who is a spirit, amen, we should enter into a spiritual rest. I'm talking about a spiritual rest where uh, there's no more anxiety, amen. A spiritual rest where it is that even though you're experiencing something in the flesh, glory to God, you have peace. I'm talking about the peace uh -huh, that's beyond all understanding, the peace that comes from our Lord and Savior, glory to God. We should enter into a spiritual rest, amen. While we're worried about and arguing back and forth about what day is the Sabbath, amen. I can see Paul at some point, Paul said, look, I say, he began to become satisfied with whatever state he found himself in. I believe at some point he entered into a spiritual rest. Glory to God. Romans, the 14th chapter, in the 5th verse through the 6th verse, and also the ninth chapter through the 10th verse. We see here, one man esteemeth one day above another. Mm -hmm. Another esteemeth every day alike. Can we see Paul dealing with something here? We see here, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You need to be persuaded in your own mind. Glory to God. Don't argue back and forth about the Sabbath. Amen. Man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Not only do you need a physical rest, amen, I encourage you eh, to enter into a spiritual rest. Glory to God. But we see here Jesus in the second chapter uh -huh, of Mark, uh -huh, correction, the sixth chapter in the second verse of Mark, we see here he began on the Sabbath as we've been discussing the Sabbath to teach in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. It says according to his own custom. Mm -hmm. We know that this is something that Jesus did. Amen. You can read about that in Luke, the fourth chapter in the 16th verse, where Jesus went into the, uh, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We see here in Luke, the fourth chapter, the 17th through the 19th verse, it reads, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet. <laughs> Listen, this is wonderful here because we understand and we've studied uh, on many occasions the prophet. The prophet was appointed by God. The prophet was what to speak only that which came from God. Amen. This is significant. He was delivered the book of the prophet. Amen. Uh, when we get over and it continues to read and when he had opened the book, it says he found the place where it was written. It says, listen, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has what anointed me to preach the gospel uh -huh, to the poor and has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and, re and, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the acceptable year, amen. Glory to God. We spend more time reading everything else except the word of God. We spend more time trying to raise money than we do preaching the word of God that the captives may be set free, amen. Uh -huh. Recovering the sight, it says, to the blind, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, amen, glory to God, to preach the acceptable year, I'm talking about, of the Lord. I'm talking about the wisdom of Jesus, amen, beyond the practices then, glory to God, and I'm talking about beyond some of the practices, amen, that still exist today, glory to God. It's amazing how folks won't allow you to get by your past, amen. It's amazing, amen. And they'll bring it up over and over and over and over and over again, amen. 
Because what you find is outside the character. Their desire is not to bring God glory. Jesus said, above all, love one another. Don't exalt yourself over one another. And we see here that the pride of life, sometimes it just creeps in. Glory to God. Uh-huh. And they'll get to the point where they'll bring it up. Oh, he and all that. That's Ann's son over there. Look here in the third chapter. It says here, my mother's name is Mary Ann, by the way. It says here, it says, in the third verse, it says, Is not this the carpenter's son? Uh, carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? <clears throat> and they were offended. Listen at that. They were offended at him. Oh, he didn't go to seminary school. Amen. Seminary school, ABC on the hill, glory to God. It's like, I got a doctor's degree. He don't have a doctor's degree. You know how we do, amen. They want to size him up, glory to God. He say, he's he just a carpenter. Uh-huh. They, they, this this, they weren't saying this to esteem him. Oh, no. This, what, this comment here wasn't to glorify him. This comment it wasn't to because they respected him, glory to God. Mm -hmm. well, We're going to get to it, glory to God. Uh, this was to kind of put things in <laughs> where they thought they should be and their misguided expectations, their own beliefs. Uh huh. But see here in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the first through the fifth verse. But noise to them, we see it says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, mm -hmm. and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Can you see the doves just resting upon Jesus, glory to God? The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after his hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You can continue to read on. I asked the Sunday school class, what are some of the things that drive expectations? You know what I'm talking about. What are some of the things that drove the expectations when uh, you started in the ministry? Glory to God. You know, what are some of the things that drive expectations in our culture today? Mm -hmm. And the second question. One, one thing that drives expectations today is things we have heard, things that have been passed down to us. Mm -hmm. And so because things that we have heard, we kind of expect those things, mm -hmm. you know, to happen because that's what we've been told happened in the past. So if it mm -hmm. happened in the past, we kind of expect them to happen again in the present, or even in the future. Amen. Things that we have heard. Amen. Um, past events. Amen. They drive expectations. Glory to God. Also, uh, when we look at uh, how they viewed Jesus um, just as the carpenter's son, and so they didn't look at his family as being, you know, uh, able to have such education or to have such uh, esteem. Uh, and they didn't look at uh, Jesus as being anybody. You know, he's from Nazareth. Mm -hmm. You know, then a good thing in Nazareth. So they didn't expect anything. Uh, you know, of esteem from Jesus because he is the carpenter's son. They're just looking at the fact that he's a carpenter, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, and they, you could tell how that they thought about people that was in that type of profession, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as if, you know, they were not going to be in the body. Amen. Glory to God. We see here that the individual values, motives, we see the heart of man. We see here that which is the fabric of the family, amen, uh, which is where we see our societal norms, eh? we see uh, rooting from. I'm talking about the family. I'm talking about the individual. We see here where, in many cases, individuals just lack value. Individuals lack uh, spiritual motivation. Individuals, we find out, in a lot of cases here, we find out that 
they lack the spirit of God. And this thing we see here in individuals then and we see in individuals now, it pairs over into the family. And we see the family, which is the root of our societal norms. We see here uh, the fabric of the individual torn. We see here the fabric of the family torn. And we see the society at large. We see the fabric, amen, torn, glory to God. But I encourage you, don't worry about what individuals say about you. Don't worry about what your family say about you. Don't worry about what society says about you. Be like 2 Timothy, the second chapter, and the 15th verse. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh huh. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Just rightly divide the word of truth. Glory to God. Why did people struggle? Mm hmm to accept the wisdom of God. Why do you think people struggle to accept the wisdom of God? Now, by tradition, we know that he had been entering the synagogue. From the time he was 12 years old, he was demonstrating uncanny wisdom and knowledge about the things of God. And now, he's been out and we read the background and we know that he healed a woman with an issue of blood. We know that he cast out demons into the swine, amen. We know that, hey, he made the lame walk, amen. We know that uh, he took uh, and he bought, raised a girl from the dead. Now, if he'd done all these things, it's amazing how other people accept you, but your own folk won't even accept you. It's amazing, uh-huh. How you can minister to others, but when you minister to the ones right there with you, they'll accept the word from somebody else before they accept the word from you. Why do you believe that people struggle to accept Jesus uh -huh, and the wisdom that he was demonstrating? Glory to God. Well, I believe when I look at the story of Jesus, he mm -hmm. started off as a young man. He was young and strong and, uh -huh. uh, and he had all this wisdom mm -hmm. uh, you know above the uh i say you know the old man mm -hmm. but not only that he came with power when he spoke he spoke with power when he spoke things happened people got healed people got delivered and so he was a a, a young man and mm -hmm. uh and so i believe that um you know by him being you know, it remind me of, of me growing up, uh, I used to always be rejected from doing something because they say I'm too little. But I knew <laughs> how to do it, and that would make me so upset. I couldn't sing in the choir because I was too little. You were too little. And I, was, <laughs> and I cried and cried. So as I grew up, I had these different obstacles where I would face people saying I'm too little for this or I'm too short. Or, you know. But God don't look at how big or how small we are. He's going to use us, you know, according to his will. But man, look at size. They look at how you look. They look at where you come from. But God don't look at all that. He look at the heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. God looks at the heart. We see beyond the culture. And we see here that then and sometimes people still do now try to put God in a box. Amen. Uh-huh. But beyond your thoughts. Amen. Beyond your ways. Uh-huh. We see that you all... Many times today still run into naysayers, amen. Don't worry about the naysayers, amen, because we know God don't like naysayers, glory to God. Wisdom tells me in Proverbs 6 and 16 through 19, there are six things doeth the Lord hate. Uh -huh. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, you know what I'm talking about. Some, some people, they're so proud you can't even look at them. A lying tongue. Some folks, they just lying all the time. And hands that shed innocent blood. It says in the 18th verse mm -hmm, of Proverbs, the 6th chapter, it says a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Mm -hmm. Feet that be swift to run into mischief. You know what I'm talking about. Folks is always stirring up stuff. They in everybody's business except their own. Mm -hmm. A false witness uh -huh, that speaketh lies. You know what I'm talking about. They kind of tell the truth. They kind of leave it out there with a question mark. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. I heard from uh, my mentor. He told me one day, he said, be mindful when you minister. Amen. When I came into the faith and he told me, he said that some will try to disprove you. Amen. We see the motives. We see the heart of man. He said that some will desire to reason with you. Amen. I found out that when you're in the spirit, amen, we understand that a house that's divided that cannot stand. We find out that when you're in the spirit, it becomes easy for you to reason with your brother or your sister, amen. You spend less time trying, less time trying to disprove him and more time trying to come into agreement with him, amen. Yes, uh, Sister Hornsby said one of the reasons is because some people are still holding on to your past. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, are where you and they are where you, and, and, and are where you came from. They're not where you at now, but they are where you came from. So they still holding on to your past. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's a wonderful comment there, Sister Horns. But we find out that people they love to hold on to the past. What good thing can come out of Nazareth? What good can come out of Nazareth? My Lord and Savior, glory to God, came out of Nazareth. Glory to God. Amen. Don't be bound. Don't allow people to bind, bind you up. Don't allow people to hold you back because of what they think. Glory to God. In all that you do, work, think, speak to bring God glory. Uh-huh. Because at the end of the day, be reassured that God knows their hearts. God knows what you're thinking right now. Glory to God. Amen. God knows what you're saying right now, even if you're not saying it. When I read Mark, the second chapter and the eighth verse, it tells me, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit uh -huh, that they so reasoned with themselves, uh -huh, we see he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Amen. So God know what you're thinking. Glory to God. Amen. You don't have to say it. Amen. You. Mm -hmm. I was looking at in Mark 2 and 8 mm -hmm. when they say and immediately. Mm hmm. He wasn't, see, Jesus already perceived mm -hmm. the spirit of what they were thinking about. Amen. Sometimes we try to figure out, like, we know something wrong, you know, in, in sometimes the environment we're in, mm -hmm. but we can't figure it out. Uh -huh. Sometimes it take us for a minute to figure it out, but it didn't take Jesus no time. It said he immediately perceived mm -hmm. in his, in, you know, in his spirit Amen. what they were reasoning in their minds about. So, you know, God know every thought that we think. Amen. Glory to God. God knows what you're thinking. God knows what the people are thinking around you. Glory to God. So don't worry about their faces. Glory to God. Don't worry about what they're thinking. Glory to God. Jesus knows. Amen. And God will give you discernment if he desires. Amen. About what they're thinking. Amen. He'll give you exactly what to say in that hour. Glory to God. We see here in the fourth verse. Amen. Of the sixth chapter of Mark. It says, but Jesus said unto them. A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Amen. It's amazing how folks will honor you. Amen. I'm talking about receive you. Amen. A lot of time when people see the word honor, the first thing they go to, is, can we get a gift? Can you shine my shoe? Anybody got? No, that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about respect. I'm talking about uh, privilege. We see Jesus responding to the people's rejection with the proverb that a prophet is not what appreciated at home. I'm talking about the prophet was to what? Speak the word of God. Amen. You can read about that in Mark, the sixth chapter, and the 17th verse through the 29th verse. We want to make it out what we want to make it out of. We see similar to the Old Testament prophets whose words were often rejected uh -huh, by those who knew them best. You can look back and look at the prophets and see how, in many cases, we see the culture would reject the word of God. The Israelites, man, sometimes when you read back, uh, man, you just look at the Israelites, it almost seemed like they were schizophrenic. They was all over the place. One minute they was here, and the next minute they was there. One minute, I'm glad you saved me, Lord, and the next minute, you brought me out here to die? <laughs> the Israelites we see here. But we see here Jesus mm -hmm, responds to their rejection with a proverb uh -huh, that a prophet is not appreciated at home. 
And to give understanding, read Luke, the fourth chapter, in the 28th through the 29th verse. Because you'll see here that it says, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. And they were upset about it. He coming in here speaking like this with authority. Oh, and then all, it's a, and rose up, the Bible tells me in the 29th verse, and thrust him out of the city and led him, what, unto the brow of the hill where unto the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Uh-huh, we know that later on, if you continue to read, you'll see what Jesus went ahead and continued on, amen. Don't worry about the naysayers, amen. Don't worry about when you go home, amen, and they don't want to receive you, amen. Glory to God. Just continue to do God's will, amen. We see Jesus stay focused, amen. Jesus maintained the course, amen, that which he was purposed to do, glory to God. Amen. He didn't allow, amen, the naysayers, glory to God. He didn't allow the ones with ill hearts, amen, and minds, amen, and speech, amen, to discourage him. Don't be discouraged, glory to God, about the things that people say. God knows their heart, amen. Experience peace, amen. Experience a spiritual Sabbath, amen. Become at rest in your spirit, even in the midst, glory to God, of adversity. In the fifth verse it says here, and he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. Amen. I ask the question, can you hinder the movement of God? <laughs> See, Jesus did not perform many miracles due to the people's enormous unbelief. Mm -hmm. Others drowned in disbelief, uh-huh except to lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. Glory to God. You can read about that in Mark, the fifth chapter, in the 23rd verse. Uh -huh. It seems that only a few people demonstrated faith. Uh -huh. Others just drowned in disbelief. What is our state of belief in whatever situation we find ourselves? Do we drown in disbelief or we, do we believe God to his word? Amen. In Mark, the fifth chapter and the fourth verse, we see when we pray in secret, stop desiring to drag mess along with you. Amen. Mark, the fifth chapter and the fourth verse, we know that when you pray in secret, uh -huh, and we're students of the word, we know that God will reward you openly. Glory to God is what the word tells me. But we see here when you go back and read in Mark, we see that, and we're talking about doubt right now. There were some that doubted, amen. And I heard, uh, Pastor, I heard you preach one time, uh, you mentioned a sermon, you said that you preached, you said, doubt, get out, amen. We see that he did not drag the, I call it, doubting folk um, in the room with them, glory to God. Because my question was, can you hinder, amen, the movement of God? I'm talking about on your behalf, glory to God. If you want God to do something for you, amen, to bring him glory, uh, it requires your belief, amen. I say, amen, your belief, your faith, amen, not that which you can see. I'm talking about that which you can't see, amen. Doubt can have an impact on your experience with the Father. Amen. Let's move on to the sixth verse. And our final verse here this morning. It says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. The Bible tells me Jesus marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching. He continued to do what he was purposed to do. Don't worry about if people can't believe that you change. Amen. You just live a life, amen, um, that's respectful. You live a life that's loyal. You live a life that's submitted to God in such a manner that at some point, amen, they'll see God's glory, amen, as you just be obedient to that which he called you to do. 
Jesus was amazed at their unbelief, their unwillingness to believe that his wisdom and power were from God. This carpenter's son, oh, we're looking for a king. We're looking for him to ride in on a white horse. Amen. And Jesus came in on a donkey. Many of us, we still seek to be kings. Amen. We still seek to be what we call temporal kings. Amen. I want to be a spiritual king. I want to be a king. Amen. I want to be one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Keep working for the Lord. Don't allow the sentiment, glory to God, of a few to discourage you. Amen. Don't allow the sentiment of a few to discourage you. Continue to bring God glory in all that you do. I'm talking about the wisdom of Jesus. Amen. From a little boy, we understand that he marveled, amen, um, the people that he was around, amen. And because of his belief, his obedience, amen, because of who he was, we see because of timing, he, were, he was able to do all that he was called to do. I encourage you to know that you are able to do that all that you are called to do in time, amen. We spoke a lot about time. Sometimes we want to operate outside of God's timing. We want to operate outside of God's purpose. Glory to God. Amen. As we close this lesson, remember that all scripture is given to us by God's inspiration. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. We should rightly divide the word of God in wisdom. Amen. We need to rightly divide the word of God, amen, in wisdom. 2 Peter 1 and 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. This wisdom that we're talking about comes from God. If you want to understand the scripture, amen, educate yourself, amen, study to show yourself approved unto God. I hope that you enjoyed this Sunday school lesson this morning on the wisdom of Jesus, the carpenter, the prophet, the high priest, amen, our Lord and Savior. And look forward to your presence next week. As a note, if you would like to support Be Ye Holy Ministries through giving, you can click on the link uh -huh, in the video or go to the web page BeHolyMinistries.org and click on the button that says giving. Our next service starts at 1130. We would love to see you there. Until next Sunday, our motto is a child saved is a soul saved plus the life. May God bless you and we hope to see you here next week. Thank you for attending this awesome service. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again and may God bless you.